you are now joined on the phone by head coach for the 7-0 and Spring Mills Lady Cardinals, head coach George Gosk. How are you doing today, Coach Gosk? Oh, doing great, fellas. A little tired from the game last night, but I'm, I'm doing well. Hey, it was a big win for you guys, 83-20 to over Washington. You guys are now 7-0 and on the season, 2-0 and to start EPAC play. Uh, what has kind of been the catalyst to this 7-0 and start? So uh, I think the last time I talked to you guys, you know, I talked about defense and, uh, you know, energy and effort in that in that aspect of our game. And, and for us, that's that's been the catalyst, uh, you know, with the streak that we're on. Um, it's been our defensive capability and our energy that we bring. Coach, uh, last year when your team played Washington in uh, the regional championship, it was a one-point game or a game that came down to miss free throws and then you guys win in overtime. And then this year, uh, for the first time playing them, just uh, dominate the game. What does that say about your girls' improvement from last year to this year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we've grown up uh, over a year. You know, those games helped us, uh, you know, get to this point now. Um, so, you know, these young ladies have grown tremendous within the, within a year. Um, you know, going into last night's game, we, uh, you know, we, uh, I told the girls, we, we know Washington as a team that took us in overtime last year, you know, for the regional championship. So going into that game, that, that motivation kind of helps. Um, you know, and just the style of play, how we're playing this year, you know, with our full court pressure has kind of set us up um, to where we're at now. The hard work clearly paying off so far, Coach Gosk. So how was it, I guess, throughout the off season and even into last year? Because I know it's a very young team that you have getting these girls to buy into the program and what you wanted it to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, last year was a, was a good year, and, uh, you know, we're trying to expand on that. So, you know, working hard throughout the summer, throughout this off season, and into, uh, you know, for us, it became two months of, uh, you know, a month and a half of, of practice. And um, these young ladies have bought into the system that we're in now. You know, we weren't really a full-court pressure man-to-man team last year. Um, but everybody's kind of embraced that role this year of, uh, you know, being in shape, being the best in shape team in the EPAC, which was one of our goals. Um, and being to, able to play that up court, uh, up tempo style, you know, pressuring in the backcourt and, you know, moving the ball in transition and just playing a fast paced game. Hey, coach, last night I crunched the numbers. Your team's averaging 78 points a game, only giving up 28 and a half points a game. When you look at the scores for your team, obviously you guys bring back Dandridge, Boldu, Corinne Edsel, but the addition of the freshman and Corinne's little sister, uh, Reagan Edsel, how much do you think her scoring? She scored, uh, I believe, seven points last night, but averaging over eight points a game so far. How much do you think that her scoring and, and her rebounds, she had 15 boards last night, seven blocks, seven steals. How much do you think not just her scoring, but all around play has helped you guys get to this point? Yeah, um, I like to look at I like to look at Reagan like the mini Kevin Durant. Um, she kind of does everything that she needs her to do. Um, you know, if she's not scoring, you know, which we spread the ball around pretty well with scoring wise, but if, if you know, if she's not a high scorer, she's usually grabbing down, you know, double digit rebounds or usually, you know, f- over five blocks a game. And those stats become just as big as points because in, those things in turn transition into points for other kids. And so, um, you know, those kind of intangibles become huge for our program moving forward. I kind of said uh, Reagan reminds me of Penny Hardaway in a lot of ways, so I can see the Kevin Durant too. But uh, <laughs> that's a good tag. Um, your team, coach, you know, obviously dominating a lot of teams in the area right now. So how do you kind of keep the focus of the girls, uh, knowing that you still have a lot of goals ahead of you and a lot that you want to accomplish this year? Yeah, obviously, you know. Any coach in the state will tell you, hopefully, their their end goal is to win a state championship. And for us, that's the goal this year. And so, you know, we try to, I try to have us prepared each game, you know, like we're going into a state, you know, tournament game. And and so we want to, you know, I, I tell the girls, you know, there's no such thing as perfection, but we want to make sure that we have execution throughout the game and that, you know, we're able to make sure that, if we were in a state championship game that we're executing to where we need to be 
moving forward because you know we always want to be in that situation and and putting that a little bit of that pressure on ourselves um, to make sure we're playing to the best of our ability. Seven to zero start, Coach Gosk. Obviously, the count or the Eastern Panhandle's on notice with how good this team is and. The notoriety for your program is slowly building up in the state, but when it comes to rankings that we like to follow and everything week in and week out, it seems like your team's just not there yet because of only playing seven games compared to teams that have played double that or if not more already this year. But with that being said, what is it, has it been like for your team only playing seven games knowing that eventually that, that no, notoriety will be there? Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, I've been preaching, you know, the proof's in the pudding. And, uh, you know, people, um, you know, I think people might have questioned us starting out uh, kind of slowly. You know, the Bridgeport game, uh, we didn't put up a ton of points. And, you know, uh, Hampshire, we didn't, we had a nice layoff and we, we didn't put a ton up. And so I think just the consistency of, of you know, playing weekly now, um, allowing our kids to grow, um, you know, getting games in, you know, I, I think we'll continue to climb the rankings. Um, you know, what's, what's good about our state is a lot of our EPAC teams have played around the state and will play around the state. And so, you know, hopefully other people are able to, you know, maybe compare scores and see where we're at with other schools in our state. And, you know, hopefully that helps us moving forward. Um, you know, when if if and when we're able to capture a regional title and head to states, you know, with the rankings and things like that, hopefully that helps moving forward. And coach, looking at the schedule coming up here, you guys are at Musselman Thursday, and then you get a week off before you take on Hedgesville at Hedgesville, and then you have Bishop O'Connell at home the 21st on next Saturday. And then kind of after that, it's like three, maybe four days max between each game. So you have a whole week off after this week. Do you think that that'll help rejuvenate heading into kind of like a second half of the schedule? Yeah, absolutely. I think that can uh, that can be twofold. That could help or that could hurt you, you know, based on, um, you know, how you have your kids prepared. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure we stay engaged in practice during that week. So, you know, we'll try to keep it up tempo. This way we don't lose our edge um, because, you know, that, that, that those kind of things can happen throughout the season. And, and like you said, you just want to kind of stay refreshed as well. So it's kind of a, a balance there. And, you, you know, you just want to make sure you have your kids, um, you know, on edge uh, and staying on edge. But you also want to make sure you're allowing them some time to recover as well. Final question for you, Coach Gosk. The next step, obviously, is when it comes to the state tournament, hopefully you guys make it there, step one, but is yep, to compete absolutely. when it comes against all the other teams in the state, get a win, and hopefully string a couple wins together. What's your team need to do to make that possibility a reality this year? Yeah, I think, I think uh, you know, we just need to keep believing in, in what we do as a team and, and keep trusting what we do. Um, you know, played in that Petersburg game, and I thought Petersburg did a good job coming out against us with a good game plan. And, you know, at first it might have rattled us a little bit, but we stayed with it. We stayed the course. We stayed with what we do, and it, it paid off. And I think there's trusting in our system, trusting in um, each other as teammates and coaches. I think those are the things that, that will pay dividends down the stretch facing, you know, hopefully facing some of the best teams in the state when it comes to the state tournament. Coach Goss, thanks for the time, and uh, we'll see you here in a few weeks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you having me on. I was head coach for the Spring Mills Cardinals, Lady Cardinals, George Gosk, and uh, obviously out to a great 7-0 and start. And uh, just mentioned they have a, a very good team coming in here in Bishop O'Connell. It's a private school out of Northern Virginia. They're really good on the boys' side, but also good on the girls' side. So that'll be a tough test for them coming in. Out of the non-conference portion, they only have four games remaining, including that Bishop O'Connell game. They'll have Mercersburg Academy away and then home the 26th and the 31st. And then they are home against Clear Spring on February 4th. And the rest of the games, EPAC games. They'll have Musselman. Hedgesville Jefferson coming up, and then on the 30th, Washington, the 2nd of February, Martinsburg, Musselman, Jefferson, Hedgesville, the 9th, 13th, and 16th to round out the regular season. But uh, 7 0 start to the season, they're not getting that notoriety, as Colin mentioned. They're, I believe, ninth in the latest AP girls basketball poll in the state. Yeah, but 
I think what stands out when you look at Spring Mills and you look at some of the numbers, I mean, you mentioned the the point differential and everything like that, but the other thing is they're scoring efficiently. Uh, This team shoots 48% from the floor and 35% from three. So, I mean, for a high school team, those are really great numbers. Really, for any team, they're great numbers, but you don't see those kind of numbers at the high school level. So, I think this team is obviously built to, you know, come out of the EPAC. But can they take the next step? Can they uh, get some wins down in Charleston? And it's hard to believe that they won't be able to get at least one win because I think this team has a lot of talent. Uh, They've gotten better. They add Reagan Ensel, who as a true freshman, I think has been a real difference maker for them. I mean, Spencer, you talked about her game the other night. That's just insane numbers. Um, with everything she's able to do. So uh, you add her to the fold. Kyla Dandridge, I think, is a really solid player leading the team in scoring. Shoots 55% from the floor. So it's a complete team. They have a lot of talent, have a lot of uh, players they can bring in off the bench. They can provide a spark. So the only real question would maybe be height. They don't have that, like, six foot four player. But besides that, this team's set to to make a run and I think do a lot of great things. So I like the Spring Mills team quite a bit.